everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, just a reminder, this is an orientation for the new students who are joining us for the Running Start program at CWU uh, this coming fall, the 2023-2024 school year. I'm recording this orientation for students who are taking classes online or who could not make it to one of the in-person information sessions. We'll get started. So my name is Chelsea Braun. I'm the advisor for the Running Start program at CWU Sammamish. If you are an online student and um, you are enrolled through the Sammamish campus, please be aware that the Sammamish campus students usually get to enroll a little bit earlier than the regular students do on the main campus each quarter. Uh, so you're assigned to work with me so that you can enroll as early as possible. Oftentimes online classes tend to fill up more quickly um, than some of the in-person classes do. Other people you may meet or get e information emails from would be our regional director, Mark DiVirgilio. He's in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of our campus, and he also is the director of the Linwood campus. We do also have some center operations specialists who essentially manage our entire office. Mirva Sibakov, who uh, manages our, our schedule and kind of keeps everybody organized, and John Streepy. He is also one of our faculty members, so if you are taking History 144 in person, you are also likely to have him as one of your instructors. We do also have other faculty members that work with us through the CWU Sammamish campus, as well as those who coordinate with us online. But we are a very small campus with a pretty small staff. So things that you may have gone over with me while you were doing uh, Running Start Advising, if you haven't done advising yet, and we'll make, need to make sure that that happens within the next week or so. Um, important aspects of your account, your MyCWU account, your email and your Canvas. Um, these are kind of the main things that you'll use to be successful as a student throughout the school year. Um, you'll use your MyCWU account to access grades, register for classes, pay fees, and so many more things. This is kind of your hub for um, all of the um, items that you'll need to make sure that you are taking care of throughout the quarter. You access the web content for your courses through Canvas. And I know that when we did advising, you will have been able to check your Canvas and your email from your homepage on MyCWU, but there's also a link there at canvas.cwu.edu, which is kind of another way that you can log into your Canvas page. All online content is accessed over Canvas. So if you're in an online class, you'll need to make sure that Canvas is working. Um, you'll stay updated on important information by checking your CWU student email. Again, it's extremely important that you're checking it because all the information um, for updates, deadlines, anything is going to go to your MyCWU student email address. Please remember that this is required that you check it, and it's your responsibility to make sure that you're keeping up on your correspondence. So one of the things that Running Start students are responsible for that you may not be used to in high school is that students are responsible for their own textbooks and course materials. You can always check to see what uh, textbooks your course requires by going to the Wildcat Shop, wildcatshop.net. Uh, the Wildcat Shop is our um, bookstore for CWU Ellensburg, and then the online um, option is there. Um, you're welcome to use the Wildcat Shop to order textbooks, or you can order uh, online through another website, just so long as you're making sure that you're uh, checking that you know what the title, uh, the ISBN number, the edition number, of a, of a physical textbook. Um, please note that uh, some professors do use physical books. You may need to order something, but many of our instructors, especially since COVID, uh, will use online textbooks or what is called an inclusive access textbook. And um, this is oftentimes abbreviated as IA. Um, it will show up in your Wildcat shop. Um, it'll show up as a Wildcat shop charge on your account. Um, and sometimes I get questions about this throughout uh, the the school year, you know, I have a Wildcat shop charge on my account, but I didn't order anything. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be an inclusive access textbook. Um, if an inclusive access textbook is part of your class, you will also get an email about that to your MyCWU student email. So please make sure you're checking there. You can check your syllabus or ask your instructor if you have further questions about your inclusive access textbooks. Um, and then please keep in mind that if you do qualify, which means if you qualify for free or re reduced lunch at your high school, 
if you are in foster care, if your primary parent is receiving unemployment, or if your family is on public assistance, you can potentially borrow physical books. We can um, rent them from the running store office. Um, and if, this, if you feel like this is something that you would benefit from, uh, please let me know. In addition, there are a couple of fees that Running Start students are responsible for. So tuition, of course, is covered uh, through your school district, but there are a couple of fees. There's a $25 multimodal fee per quarter, and this is required for Running Start students. This maintains your Canvas page. And a $3 per credit technology fee uh, per quarter. Um, this maintains your student email, your MyCWU account, that kind of thing. $3 per credit maxes out at 10 credits. So even if you're enrolled in more than 10 credits, you would never uh, be charged more than $30 per quarter for a uh, technology fee. Please keep in mind that you may also have other fees associated with individual classes. For example, language classes oftentimes have an additional fee for materials. Lab sciences may have an additional fee for materials. So please also make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. And you can view and pay your fees in your MyCWU student account. If you want your parents or guardians uh, to pay your fees for you, or if that's the intent, then you'll want to set them up as an authorized user in MyCWU. If you want your parents or guardians to be able to call and ask questions about fees, you will also want to make sure to do a FERPA release, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, CWU from your My CWU student account, if you go into your student center and under the fees ribbon, there's a link you can click on to, uh, to pay fees and you can pay them online. It'll take you to an account that looks like this. Uh, you can either make a payment there or on the right hand side, you'll notice there's a place where you can authorize users. You want to make sure to add your parents there so that your parents can come in and um, pay fees on your behalf. And then in addition to that, I mean, we want to make sure we talk about parent access to records. So CWU staff, which includes the Running Start staff, must follow all CWU records and FERPA policies uh, regarding student records. So FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act that uh, is applied to all students at CWU, even if they're under the age of 18. This means that staff are only able to release student information to students and to the high school as authorized by your enrollment verification form, um, unless you provide permission to release information to other authorized individuals in your MyCWU account. So the Reading Start office um, in, in this is, comes from me, but um, I will provide quarterly grade reports and share any relevant and available information or concerns with your high school counselor. So I will send out a grade report at the end of every quarter. You don't have to worry about sending any grades anywhere. Um, and then if there's an emergency or a concern, then I will automatically contact your high school counselor. By signing a release of information, this just allows us to be able to answer questions for parents if they have them. This can be helpful if there are questions about fees, but this can also include academics or um, attendance, that kind of thing. Um, we don't send out any kind of attendance reports. There's no grade reports. There's no check-ins. There's no information that goes out to parents. But if they would like to be able to have information, would like to be able to call us to ask questions, you'll need to make sure to sign a release of information form. So you will want to go to the CWU, your MyCWU account, um, and fill out the information there. So you'll go to your MyCWU account, go to the student tab at the top of the page. You'll select personal from the column on the left, click on release of information, and then read the instructions and then add any designees you'd like to add. So just basically adding in the personal information um, for your parents or anyone else you'd like us to be able to share information with. So for Running Start Advising and Registration, so I should have met with most, if not all of you already. If I haven't, we'll want to make sure to connect sometime within the next week. You'll fill out the Running Start Enrollment Verification Form each quarter prior to registering. So you'll make sure your high school counselor will fill out the important information in the middle and make sure that it's signed. You and a parent will sign it. If you need to have a conversation with your high school counselor, talking about classes you need for high school graduation, making sure you're still on track to graduate. You can do that each quarter as well. Um, you'll schedule an appointment with your Running Start advisor, which is me, and we'll bring your enrollment verification form to that meeting. You can email it to me at any point ahead of time, of course. 
and we'll review the courses that are going to be offered for the following quarter and then register for classes. So that's always the process for each quarter. Uh, please keep in mind that your enrollment verification form will need to be turned in every quarter. Um, sometimes I have students that in, uh, turn one in in the fall and then think that that counts for the remainder of the year. Um, please keep in mind that this is done quarter by quarter, so you'll need to make sure to get a new one each quarter. Um, and then advising can be done in person. If you are an in-person student or if you're around the area, you're welcome to stop by in person, but I'm always available online via Microsoft Teams or Zoom. So some important information about schedule changes. So you can drop a course with no penalty through the first five days of the quarter, which is the following Tuesday after we start. This is called the change of schedule period, which means that you can drop a class and it just disappears from your schedule as if nothing was ever there originally. Um, you can withdraw from a course within the first six weeks of the quarter. So after that first five days change of schedule period and within the first six weeks, you can still withdraw from a course. It's called an uncontested withdrawal. Um, this will result in a W on your transcript. It just means that you were in the class for a significant period of time and then withdrew. It doesn't Im impact your GPA, so you don't get a bad grade or a zero or anything like that. Um, you'll just make sure that uh, it's, it's got a W on it. Um, you can swap and add classes during the change of schedule period. So within those first five days, again, you're welcome to change into a different class or add an additional class. Um, depending on availability of courses, of course, or instructor permission sometimes, so you want to make sure you're checking the, with instructors. And then make sure to discuss any changes with your high school counselor. Uh, you're encouraged to check in with Running Start Advisor before making schedule changes, um, but those things are all done through my CWU. Uh, please keep in mind that the academic standards for Running Start are slightly stricter than the university's academic standards. Uh, so to remain in what's called good standing, you want to make sure that you have a cumulative and quarterly GPA that is a 2.0 or higher. So essentially a C or a C minus average. If your quarterly GPA falls below a 2.0, you'll be placed on academic probation. Essentially what this means is that you will be in contact with me. We'll have a conversation about what went on during the quarter and discuss ways that we can support you in making sure the next quarter is better. Um, we can schedule at times to check in, uh, all of that. Just want to make sure that quarterly GPA then remains above a 2.0 for the next quarter. Um, for academic suspension, if you were previously on probation and your quarterly or cumulative GPA falls below a 2.0, then you'll be placed on academic suspension, meaning you can no longer participate in the Running Start program. Suspension can be appealed. Of course, we know that sometimes there are some really difficult extenuating circumstances going on in a student's life, but we have those uh, change of schedule period, uncontested withdrawal deadlines, those kinds of things in place to try to prevent the GPA from taking. Uh, so please keep these uh, standards in mind um, as you are going through your quarter. So while we are a small campus, and while many of you are going to be completely online students, um, we don't expect that you will be accessing the tutoring services or the library on the main campus, but please be aware that the tutoring center and the library both have wonderful websites that you can access all the materials from. Um, free tutoring is available to all students, including Running Start students. Tutoring is available online in a variety of subjects from 5 a.m. to 12 a.m. every day, so open almost 24 hours. You can also access the Writing and Math Center consultations as well. So you can get assistance with math classes as well as writing if you'd like someone to look over your paper and kind of discuss ways to improve your writing. Um, that's always available. And then academic coaching is also available. So if you'd like assistance with other things beyond specifically um, subject content for courses, that's also an option for you. Um, the link is there, cwu.edu slash academic hyphen success goes to the education a center, the Academic Success Center for Online Tutoring. And then in addition, you have access to library services. You can access the library online through the main website. Um, you'll have access to all kinds of things, such as OneSearch, which allows you to search hundreds of databases. Um, you'll have access to all kinds of different uh, databases for research um, and be able to kind of filter through all, through all kinds of different items in that way. Um, you can find research guides. So be able to identify important information and supportive resources for research. You can always chat with a librarian 
there will almost always be somebody available to you uh, to chat online if you have questions about accessing books. And then, of course, you can search through the, the database for the main library. Um, it's also possible to have a textbook, a physical book, uh, mailed to you so that you can borrow that. Um, you'll notice on the right in that other links box, that is a screenshot from your MyCWU account on your homepage to the right. Um, there's an other links box and there's a link to the library there. You can access the library from your MyCWU account as well as from the website. Please note that if you have a 504 plan or an IEP, you can receive accommodations. You should be able to receive the same or at least similar accommodations for college. Um, you'll want to be aware that the high school does not automatically transfer over to the universities. So your 504 plan or IEP, however, that's accommodated in your high school. Um, you're not going to transfer over directly and you'll need to work with disability services to make sure you're requesting those accommodations. Um, you'll go to the disability services website and uh, fill out an application or sign up with them, uh, fill out um, a, a, an application and include information, personal data, um, potentially doctor's notices, that kind of thing. Um, you'll schedule a meeting then with the representative from Disability Services. They'll discuss the accommodations that you require to be successful in Running Start. At the beginning of the quarter, Disability Services will then email your professors and then you'll work with your professor to make sure that what your need, whatever you need is being accommodated. Some important dates for the upcoming quarter. September 20th, uh, that Wednesday, is when all classes start. Your enrollment verification form should be turned in by that date to make sure you aren't charged for tuition. Uh, the Running Start enrollment verification form is the only piece of paperwork that I need, but it's important to make sure um, that you've submitted it so that CWU knows that you're enrolled, your high school, your school district know that you're enrolled in Running Start so that we can uh, then bill your school district for the cost of your, your classes. September 26th, which is that following Tuesday, is the change of schedule period. Um, that's when it ends. You can add, drop, or change classes until this date. Um, all fees are also due on this date. It doesn't mean that if you don't pay your fees by that date, you'll be kicked out of class because you will not be kicked out of class. Um, but please be aware that uh, your fees will start accruing interest. And November 6th is the uncontested withdrawal deadline. You can either withdraw from a class uh, for any reason um, one, one class or, or more classes, you can draw from additional classes um, through the end of the school day, the end of the work day on that day. Um, this just essentially means that you don't have to provide any kind of documentation, it's uncontested. Um, you just want to make sure that you are communicating with your high school counselor with Running Start um, advisor about your plans to do that, but you can withdraw. December 1st is a Friday. It's the last day of instruction. This is essentially the last day where you might be learning something new in class. You can request, request what's called a hardship withdrawal through that, day, that date. Um, essentially, that means that if there was something really difficult going on in your life that prevented you from being successful in the classes, that you can request a hardship. So you would want to request an information from the registrar's office and then petition them for a hardship withdrawal. Um, you can also withdraw from all of your classes by that date. It's called a complete withdrawal, which just means you need to petition the university to withdraw from all of your classes. It doesn't mean that you can't return the next quarter. It just means that you'll be withdrawing from all of your classes at the same time. Um, a hardship withdrawal would result in an HW on your transcript indicating a hardship, and a complete withdrawal would result in Ws for all of your classes. Uh, December 5th through 8th is final exams. The Monday of final exams week, which in this case would be December 4th, is always what's called a study day. So there are never any classes or never any finals uh, that would be scheduled during that day. Your final exam could be held anytime between the 5th through the 8th. So you'd want to make sure that you are aware of what day your final exam is meant to take place. Um, once you're done with your finals and then any final work, if you're submitting final papers or something like that online, once you're done and have submitted everything, then you're done for the quarter and you're done for, for the winter break. Um, that would mean that if you had a final on December 6th and that was all, then you would be done until we came back for winter quarter on January 3rd. So we've got quite a long winter break. On that uh, following Wednesday after final exams on the 13th, you can view your grades in MyCWU 
that's when the grades will be officially posted and available for your viewing on your transcripts. And I will send a grade report to your high school on that day. If you have any questions for me, please make sure that you are emailing, contacting, emailing me. If you haven't met with me yet, please make sure you schedule an online advising appointment so that we can discuss items and make sure that you're enrolled. Um, if you have it in Running Start Enrollment Verification Form that I do not have yet, please make sure you are able to email that to me. If you are going to be an in-person student or if you're going to be around the campus, you're welcome to drop it off in person. Um, you could always just drop it off with the main office or you can deliver it directly to me. If you are an online student, of course, please make sure that you're emailing that to me or that you have your advisor email that to me. Thank you so much for your participation in the Running Start New Student Orientation. Um, and please make sure that you keep in touch throughout the quarter. Thanks so much.